Roger. This is episode 41. I am Rosina and this is a video about my crochet exploits. So if you fancy joining me, welcome, come, sit down, grab yourself some crochet and we'll have a chat. Um, I will start immediately with finished objects because I have tried doing this many times this morning and I keep messing up, so no frills today. Right. And I shall deviate somewhat from crochet, if that's alright, just to show one knitted item, that's all. As you know, it's not my natural comfort zone, um, but I made a hat. And I'm really pleased with it. It is exactly how it looked in my head. Like, it exactly. Um, which is almost a miracle. The tension is pretty good. I'm, <laughs> I have impressed myself. Um, there's just a few blips along the back. You probably can't see where it's just a little bit skewy here. And the join I did here is rubbish because I started flat before joining to do it circularly around from the main body um, because I kept messing up trying to start in the round I used circular needles and um, well I'm not a knitter so I messed it up several times but once I got cracking it was lovely quite nice to, to do and I got into a lovely little rhythm and I actually made most of this last week so I'd, uh, um, after many false starts and sort of hanging around like this much I for, for months but literally I started this probably in March messed it up eight nine times before finally <sighs> finally um, making a proper start so I messed um, so I start. I sort of left it here for a long time, and then last week I did all of that, and I really enjoyed it, but not enough to be a knitter. It was a lovely little rhythm I had going on, and um, I got quite fast towards the end. I did do a few decreases at the top to bring it in. But when it started getting tight on my circulars, I decided to cast off and then gather it closed because it's got a pom pom on, so you can't actually tell. Um, you can't tell that I had to gather it. Um, I do have DPNs, but not the right size. And even if I had the right size, I don't have the wherewithal to actually use them. Uh, so I did a few rows, I can, I can tell, I can tell there's like a uniform line here and here going all the way around. So I must have started my decreases at this mark here. So I've done a few rows um, before going, no I don't know what I'm doing, <laughs> and then binding up. Binding up, is that what one says? Me. So that's my hat and I have been wearing it because I love it, absolutely love it. The pom-pom is the most beautiful pom-pom in the world and the most expensive. It's eight pounds. I bought it from the Toft stall when I was at Edinburgh, the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I keep doing this. I just sit here and do this. It's my Edinburgh Yarn Festival hat because I bought the yarn at Edinburgh, Edinburgh Yarn Festival as well. It's Ching Fibres. Ching Fibre, Merino Double Knit, 100% Superwash and the colour is Shibuya. Everything that Ching Fibre does, all the colourways are dreamy. They are beautiful. I will definitely use this yarn again. In I see it in my future. Where and when I don't know, but it's just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So this has been my winter hat, I have been wearing it. The cat has been attacking it because of the pom-pom, so I've had to rescue it. Um, 
I, I don't want to wear it out I want it to remain beautiful so I might check it out and just I don't know <laughs> we could have it in a display case um, <laughs> of course we won't but when it gets super cold, I don't think this hat is going to do it. It's There is a bite in the atmosphere. It is nippy. But, um, and so that I've been wearing this hat, but it's not going to do it when it's super cold. I'm going to wear my C to C hat for the super, super duper cold, which is Aran and 100% wool and very warm. And I showed that to you probably, was it last episode or the, epi the episode before? So episode 39, I, I wore my C to C hat and that is a mega hot. Anyway, moving on from the only knitting I shall discuss for a while, because I'm not, I've got no knitting plans in my future. Have I talked all about it? I made up, the pattern is made up by the way, I, I stupidly just went, it'll be easy, and it wasn't hard. Um, I'm surprised that it didn't mess up and I'm surprised it looks alright. Um, so I haven't followed a pattern for that, I've just made it up and it does fit, did I try it on? It does fit and I was a bit worried that it wouldn't. I would like it, I suppose I would like it to be a little bit less pulley as it goes on and I can like I can feel it sometimes riding up my head as I wear it so I keep on having to like pull it down but that fits okay yeah got a ponytail though so it looks a bit stupid right yes moving on now ages and ages ago I made a purse a little pouch which I don't have here but I have shown it before and it is a smaller version of this um, so it's, it's got some remnants of lining stuff in there I'm gonna line it I haven't done it yet I made a small version of this a few months ago and I decided to do some charts for three different sizes this is the large version and I use a cotton Aran from Drops, I think it's Paris. There you go. Drops Paris is that. I really like this. It's cool. That is the big version. And I toyed actually. You can make it deeper if you wanted to. I haven't. Um, but you could do it, My, I thought I had um, an idea of not folding it, it's folded in half basically, I had an idea of not folding it and just doing two panels and stitching them together so it would be tote sized, like a, a tote bag, but um, I'm not going to do that. That's my biggest one and this is the small version which I made ages ago and I, I, I think I've shown this before. And then there's a pencil case version and the pencil case version is using the cotton double knit I think I use paint box for that um, whereas this is as I said uh, drops um, it's all non mercerized cotton which um, if you saw last episode you will know that I was using mercerized cotton for a different project and I didn't like it and this confirms having it sort of um, finishing that off this week has confirmed that I like a non mercerized cotton I'd never even thought about it before, but um, I have a preference. Who knew? non mercerized I don't know. There's something about it. The, the stitches kind of are more homogenised, I suppose, in, in, within the fabric that you create. Whereas the, the mercerized all the stitches felt like they were, they were separate and, and it, I could see through and there was something slippery about it I wasn't fan. I wasn't a fan and um, I'm sure it has its uses like I've used it in I think I've used it for Christmas baubles before and that's quite nice because it's got a shine on it hasn't it but 
as a general rule, I'm I'm now I'm now going to call myself a non-mercerized cotton fan, which is annoying because I've got I, when there was a drop sale a few months ago on some I think it might have been Wool Warehouse or something. I bought loads of it because it was only 80p a ball, and so I've got a bag this big full of loads of different colours and I don't know what to do with it. Or load of it's unravelled as well, or half used because I've sort of started projects with it and then just gone, no, don't like it, over and over. Um, I think that's fairly telling, isn't it? So what would you use? What would you use mercerized cotton for, please? Tell me what I should use it for and how I should use it. Um, um maybe I should make some market bags. I can't be bothered, but that would probably work quite well. Uh, what else? Tell me. I don't know. <laughs> right. My other finished object. I think it's my only finished object. Is a shawl. And it is this. And this was my my Aran acrylic stash busting stash busting shawl. And what I haven't done, and I forgot, I was going to do for you, is do some tassels, and I've forgotten. I've put all the yarn away now. There wasn't much left, but there's enough for tassels. I could do a purple tassel on the pointy, pointy triangle, pointy, and then minty green tassels on the ends. So this is dead straightforward. Um, stripey shawl. And I do plan on writing this pattern up, but um, again, I'll, I um, say again, did I even mention it? I mentioned it in my head. Um, my priority is not this. <laughs> but I finished it and I'm happy with it. I like it. My sample swatch, which I did get out because I was going to show you that. My sample swatch has a crab stitch all the way around the edge, but I didn't want to do that for the, the final one because if I were to do it, I would want to make the edging match the colour it hits so that it doesn't look messy. But I am too lazy to do that. I think that might be the main issue. And the other issue was that I didn't think I had enough of this colour. I've got very little of this left and I didn't know if I'd have enough to do it. That's probably an excuse because I reckon I do have enough just to do it. So do you think I should add my crab stitch border or not? I don't, if I do a crab stitch border, I won't add tassels because for the purple, I really don't think I've got enough yarn to do an edge and a tassel. So I could do the tassel in, in a minty green, couldn't I, or something. Right, what shall I call it? What is its name? I have nothing, nothing, I've got nothing. Name it, please. Um, I'll write it down on my list of patterns to write. What happens, as you know, is that it's really fun to make things, but when it comes to writing them up, um, it's very easy to bury your head in the sand and not do anything. So um, I've got a backlog of stuff I need to write up, like this and the bag and the socks, which I made last week, mitts I started last week, a backlog of things that need to actually um, be written up. I need to sit at the computer and write them up properly. Next week, that's a job for next week. Um, not this though. Next week is the socks that I talked about last time and I'm wearing them now. I asked you guys if you liked them and it was a yes, it was a yes. Yes, you did like them, and uh, that means I'm going to write out the pattern. It will be free because 
it's a very simple construction as far as socks go um, and I will video make the making of I'll do a tutorial um, not in this yarn because this yarn was quite um, fibrous and haloey and I think that will probably be quite difficult to record so I'll use a different Aran yarn and hope that they come out the same size um, I'm sure they will I've essentially just lost my thread um, I can't remember what I was trying to say about the socks other than I want to make the filming of the tutorial my priority for next week um, I'm sure I'll hopefully sort that out but the kids have got Monday and Tuesday off next week because the school's got an inset day or an occasional day or something um, which coincides with tar barrels that's a busy day so I could probably write off that day because we'll be out um, watching the local families carry the flaming barrels of tar on their backs around the streets. I've told you about tar barrels before, haven't I? Look it up, Google it. Um, it's fabulous, but this is going to be slightly different. I don't know for sure, but they might. I mean, we've for a few weeks we've had some road closure zzzz, um, because there was a fire in the square. And one of the main buildings in the square burnt down, which is, I mean, it's terribly sad. But they've had to close off half the square and it's caused absolute chaos. Um, but what it, what it potentially means is that they can't do the tar barrels in that area, which is the main hub of tar barrels. It's the most exciting area where, where people run, these guys are running, men, women, children, running through the streets running through the square with the, the barrel on their back. The square is just so atmospheric and so magical when um, that happens. It's the best place to view the barrels. And um, because of this fire in the square, they might not do it there. Um, because there's loads of scaffolding up and everything and it's potentially very dangerous. Um, plus it's on a Monday, Monday's usually quite quiet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, do Google it. It's a very long story, <laughs> um, uh, but it's fascinating and a bit mental, but also very good fun. Um, but that was, that's got nothing to do with crochet. It's just, that's what I'm up to next week. I'm not doing it because I'm not local. Um, we've only been here nine years and that's not local enough to be a tar barrel person you have to uh, basically you're born and bred uh, if you're allowed to do the tar barrels it means that you um, are part of a local family who've been doing it for generations um, my one of my youngest son is potentially eligible and I don't know my oldest one was not he was born outside of Ottery he was born in Exeter um, so has no <clears throat> connections to the town other than that he's lived it for nine years, moved it when he was a baby. But my youngest son, who's five, was born like pretty much in this spot where I'm sat right now. Um, he was born at home in Ottery. So therefore I'm fairly certain he would be allowed to be a tar barreler if he wanted to be however when you sort of ask the kids they're like no why would I want to do that that's scary um I don't know how pushy I should be as a parent because I would be I would I think it's an honor um to take part in this community event but my kids not, might not feel the same way I never pushed the oldest one because um I didn't think he'd be allowed to do it anyway um but the youngest one, I think he'd be really good at it. We'll have a chat. He's only five. I think you start at seven. So he's got a couple of years to think about it. We'll see. <laughs> right, where was I? I have no idea at all. Uh, I haven't got my podcast head on today. Um, I haven't had a podcast head on for a while. Um, I was very sleepy last week and it was half term so I didn't do much work really. I took 
you could argue that I took the week off. I did do some crochet and I did the knitting of the hat mostly last week. Um, but because the kids were off, there was no sitting at a computer doing any of that stuff. <clears throat> so where am I? Where, where, what should I talk about next? Um, well, I've done my finished objects, so I should, I should suppose, I suppose I should talk about works in progress. And I, yeah, I do have a work in progress. And I'm going to show it to you like that. I only started it yesterday and it's waking winter, but I'm, I'm reluctant because I've only just started. I'm, I'm kind of, um, too cowardly to show you what it, what it actually looks like, but, um, I think it's going to be good. I wish this wasn't, I wish I wasn't, it wasn't this color. I wish it was a nice, I wish it was this color, this color here, but it's, um, Blacker Yarns, Blacker Tamar Luster Blend, which I used for Emergence of Spring, so I wanted to use it again for the winter shawl in my Seasons collection. They didn't have any of the of the off-white colour left when I bought this, so I, had, so I got this. But what would have been, it would have been just brilliant. It would have been so beautiful had I had the off-white colour because it was called Ottery. This one's called... Oh, I don't know. This one's called Valency and the one I wanted was called Ottery and they'd sold out of Ottery and when I spoke to um, the lady at Blacker she said they weren't going to do it anymore and I was gutted because, well, for obvious reasons. Um, it is such a shame it would have been magic to to have made a shawl in ottery out of ottery hey ho so that's waking winter that's going to be the main color and there's two colors that complement it that are, they're over they're waiting they're waiting to be wound into cakes so essentially it's these three colors for my waking winter shawl which will be the third shawl in my Seasons collection. So I'm starting that now, even though I should be writing stuff up. I think that it's a lovely winter, winter, wintery set of colours. This one's called Kenzie, and this one is called Linna, Linna, Liner, L Y N H E R. I don't know what that, how you pronounce that word, but apparently this, I think the idea of the names behind these yarns is that they're rivers in the UK. Um, I think, although I've never heard of any of those rivers. I sure haven't. So that's that, I need to wind those. Soon. And yesterday I wound this one, which has got nothing to do with nothing. Uh, I was going to start this. This is going to be a cowl. This is Dalton fibre, bought as a as a gift um, for me from Claudia of Crochet Luna. This is the this is the Dalton label. The shade is Dolby Forest. It's a four ply, hundred percent worsted spun four ply wool from their their sheep that look like they've got bunnies ears so i said yes i i said didn't i last week that this was imminent and so much so that i've i've caked it this beautiful color absolutely beautiful green is my favorite goes quite well with these actually doesn't it these are double knit though right um I've, I don't know where I am. I'll let you know how Waking Winter gets on. Of course I will. Um, I want it out before December the 21st because that's the start of winter. 
where are we now? It's the 2nd of November? Excuse me. I, I reckon that's doable. I do. I'll keep you updated as to how that goes. My other work in progress, I think I might reject. I think I'm going to bin it off. Well, I don't know. I've just kind of lost, lost the love for it. It's a stocking, <laughs> but I've only done one side. I need to do two sides and I, I just can't bring myself to do the other side of the foot. I think that this bit is too fat or something or too long for this bit and I don't like it. I think it looks stupid. I did it. <laughs> I did do it. It's called, this is my corner to corner uh, project. My, I was going to have so many corner to corner projects for the C to C Cal and already I've rejected the the bag I was making because it was mercerised cotton and I didn't like it. Don't have any non mercerised doubled it which is really annoying. Um, so I've had to stop that C to C project and this C to C project I've just gone don't like it. Um, is that ratio of, is it just do you see what I mean about this foot being too big for the ankle bit? Or am I just being picky? I think I need to add... Somehow... Oh, it's too late, I can't. I'd have to undo it all and redo it to, to make this thicker. But I think... I wonder if I could add a row. I'd have to add a row of this as well bit too faffy maybe? What do you think? Do you think I should persevere? I've got it's Aaron weight. I've got that much left so that should do that should be plenty for the other side and I've got a whole cake of this Aaron weight. So this is my you my very much used sketch and I worked for it. I worked you, I made it upside down because that was the best way to to work it. Um, but as a sock on paper, see it didn't that didn't look too skinny on this piece of paper on this image. Doesn't look too skinny, does it? Would I be happy with it if I changed it again? Because this is actually the second version. The first version I had to, I had to rip out, rip back. Um, I don't really want to do it a third time. So am I just, is it just because I'm being picky? And would I, I mean, I'm not going to use it. Sorry, I keep spinning it around for no good reason. I don't know what to do other than put it back in the bag and hide it. You can tell I'm not I'm not enthusiastic about it. I've done one side and then gone. Nah. Who knows? I might well get it out again. I might well not get it out again. Since we're talking about C to C stuff, um, let's talk about the C to C crochet along. Not only briefly, I'm just going to mention it briefly because um, I am thoroughly enjoying seeing C to C projects finished and whips finished stuff and whips coming along, popping up on Ravelry and Instagram. If you um, are working on something and you haven't put it on Instagram, do, do, go and put it up. Same for Ravelry. Get involved in the chatter thread on Ravelry. Um, just go and see what other people are up to and whatnot. Um, it's been really interesting actually because not everybody's doing a traditional 
the what you if you say C to C and you think of those blocks not everybody's doing that I have seen some moss stitch linen stitch corner to corner I think there might have been a granny I think I'm, did I see a granny granny corner to corner as well um and then a new one a new one to me a crocheter called Karen on Instagram has come up with I don't know if you'll be able to see this you have to go on Instagram and check out the the hashtag that is c2ccal18 Karen has come up with a stabby stitch version of c2c I've never seen that before this is what it's all about discovering new things getting new ideas um for something that you might not otherwise try or um something you've seen lots of but not really given it much thought as to how you can make it new and different i don't know um go and check it out because i've yeah i've, I've loved seeing what's coming through it's brilliant because there's just a load of different things people are trying new things it's fab um even i with that stocking i've tried the shaping thing which i didn't really think about doing with c to c um it may or may not be a winner this time i you know i you know you can tell i'm not sorry my tummy's rumbling like crazy you can tell i'm not completely sold on the stocking but it might be good in a different idea give it a go um there are loads of prizes as i mentioned in the past um, loads of different patterns there'll be pattern palooses um, for winners of the cal and um, not just patterns but there's physical physical things too um, Shirley Rainbow uh, who, Teresa is a, a, a beautiful embroiderer and she incorporates crochet into her work I've mentioned her before hello um, she's gonna do a little um, she's offering a wall hanging. Um, Lisa from Raspberry Crochet has. Oh, they're not. They're, they're not yours. They're mine. She's giving away stitch markers. It will look similar to this, but these are mine. Some stitch markers, and then we have a set of badges from Claudia. It'll be these badges that a prize winner gets. Crochet related badges which I personally chose these particular three and you are getting these three not these exact ones these are my ones but you're getting that same set of three if you win one of the prizes for the cow and um, Laura from Home Fire Ridge has offered a project bag as well um, and so she also said that out to one of one of the winners uh, which will be drawn towards the end of the month because the cow still has another two weeks more than two weeks you've got well it depends on when you're watching this um the 17th of november is the last day of the cow and i will be closing the threads on ravelry on monday morning on the monday morning which is the 18th um get cracking you've got plenty of time to make some more c to c stuff honest Wow, I want, that was a noisy tummy rumble. This is my, I told you about this bag, didn't I? Claudia made this bag, it's beautifully made. Beautifully made. I mean, my bags, I mean, it's funny because she did the dodgy bag mail. My bags are truly dodgy. There's nothing dodgy about this, nothing at all. Um, I still haven't progressed um, from the project that's within the bag, which is the cuff of a sock. Will I make them? Who knows? My, um, it was my, I gave myself a mission, a challenge, and that was to make four pairs of socks for the sock along that happened um, for the month of October. October. I was going to make those ones which oh, might as well get out. which was um, some shorties 
from Ron Strong. I'm going to have to stop recording in a minute. My tummy is going mental. I was going to make those. I was going to make the Addy Day Segway socks. Of which I did make one. And now I haven't frogged it yet. So that's my Segway sock which I told you all about last episode which is and um, they are I am gonna frog that and I'm gonna make them again and they're gonna be beautiful they are well worth the effort um, the yarn is beautiful the pattern is beautiful I'm gonna have myself a beautiful pair of socks um, I will and then the stocking was gonna be one of one of my socks as well and then the ones I'm wearing I made half a side of a stocking, uh, a cuff of an ankle sock, one pair of Aran weight socks that I made up and a Segway sock. It's more than I ever would have done had that cal not, not started. So, and I am less prejudiced about socks than I was before the cal. Um, I'm more open-minded about crochet socks so that's a good thing I suppose. I wore my socks this morning to Sainsbury's, my Aran weight socks, um, in my trainers and it was a bit of a squeeze because I've got normal socks on underneath as well. Um, but I didn't go around going ugh, 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 ugh with every step with, um, with the socks on. Winner! <laughs> A winner. Um, so, in well, can I conclude? I was going to say in conclusion to my sock experience. I haven't finished my sock experience. Uh, not really. I I want to make the sock tutorial for these, which wouldn't have happened without October, and do the seg make myself a nice pair of Segway socks and then once I've done those two things then I think I will be able to say oh should I do the Ron Strong one as well strong Ron Strong ones too I don't know I think it's lunchtime guys right quick what else what else did I want to say before I went what else um, oh, C to C related. Yesterday I listened to Be Hooked. Um, I don't know her name. I should know her name. I don't know. Tiffany, Brittany, Brittany. Uh, from Be Hooked has a blog and massive crochet online presence. And she does podcasts every now and again. Some of them are really informative actually. And um, if you haven't listened to her podcasts, do check them out. They might be your cup of tea. The one I listened to yesterday was an interview with the Make and Do Crew designer, Jessica. She called Jessica. I'm not sure. Um, and it was all about corner to corner. And it was a load of hints and tips about how to make your corner to corner work better. Make and do crew. Jess, she's called Make and Do Crew. She's just released a book with corner to corner patterns in. And I'm sure you know that already because she's got a massive following. Um, but check out the podcast. It's about an hour long, this one, and it does concentrate on corner to corner stitches. And um, you can pick up loads of advice and more info about that stitch, which is perfect seeing as. We are in the midst of a corner to corner crochet along. Perfect. Right. I'm in the new issue of Crochet, Inside Crochet Magazine, but I haven't seen it yet. Um, they had a problem with the print run and um, a lot of copies are going out late. Um, I haven't had it yet, but I've got, I think I've got two patterns in issue 107. Um, one of which is a purse, a hound's tooth purse. It looks a little bit, but it's not the same as this one, which is a prototype, and I didn't like it, so I redid it. Um, the, the, the one in the magazine's bigger than this, 
I used a different purse clasp but I just had to show you that I lined it with beautiful fabric but I lined the other one in the magazine with different fabric but I love this I don't know what to do with this because the reason I um I binned off this idea is because um, I didn't like the way the claspy bits were poking out it wasn't quite wide enough so I've had to ch I changed the design to make it better um, I don't know about that sort of thing really I sort of made it up as I went along um, so therefore it's not so this is a reject but it's still quite nice I don't know what to do do you know what it's my niece's birthday tomorrow and I forgot um, I was reminded this morning because it's my friend's daughter's birthday and she said about but she mentioned birthdays and went oh, I've forgotten thingy's birthday I think I might just send her this as a present because I'd completely forgotten about it but that would make a nice little gift wouldn't it <laughs> um, the stitch is the same the yarn is the same for um, for the one that's in the magazine and funnily enough this is mercerised cotton um, and in this case it is actually quite nice it works quite well it's sort of got a bit of glamour to it <laughs> honestly I say one thing and then just turn around and go oh yeah whoops I did quite like it in that project honestly um oh I've got a funny neck ow so that was one of the that's, this is not the same but similar to the one that's in the magazine and then another thing that I think is in the magazine, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know. I did see a flash of that in, in, in Inside Crochet on their Instagram, did a flash on their stories, and I saw, I saw it in there, so I was like, yes, it's in there. And I can only assume that this is in there too, but this is a prototype brooch that I did. Um, the one that's photographed is slightly different. I think this one had too many stitches in it, and I didn't like it, so I reduced the number of stitches to make it less kind of... This was too compact. But it's a little, just a little brooch. You could put it on, put it on your handbag or something. Put it on a purse. Oh, it's quite nice. Before I go, I would just like to say thank you very much if you bought one of my patterns over the last few weeks. I, uh, it's been brilliant and it's actually kind of made me go, <gasps> This could be a real job. I could do this. Could this? I mean, before now, it's been sort of like um, it has it. It's I've I've had enough sort of an income from the crochet malarkey to support my yarn habit basically, and also um, just buy equipment. So things like a light lighting for for making this video a bit brighter and a bit better. Um, or buying, I've been able to buy, pay for software for editing videos. I've been able to pay for an upgrade for Stitch Fiddle so that I can make the charts better on my patterns, which I need to do on some old ones. I've did, did it for off the chart. That's got a, a new chart, as has Havana Nights. They've both got decent charts on the patterns, whereas the old ones. They need upgrading because the numbering system and stuff like that, it wasn't as snazzy as it is now. So I've upgraded to Stitch Fiddle. And without those kind of things, those are the sorts of things that I spend my money on when um, when I sell a pattern or whatever. Um, I would love to make crochet my actual real life job. And um, the more patterns that I sell, the more I can do that. So thank you very much, uh, without sort of getting emotional about it, wowzers, I think, is probably the, the best word. Um, thank you very much. And before I go, have you seen flashes of this? Cratcheter! I, um, I was meant to meant to wait until Christmas. This was going to be my Christmas present from somebody. I was going to choose somebody who would buy it for me for Christmas. Um, but I couldn't wait. I just bought myself a new jumper crocheter. It's from Stitcher's Tees. Stitcher Tees? Stitcher's Tees or Stitcher Tees? Um, uh, it's a small business run by uh, two sisters. Um, and you've probably already seen 
this about the place but just in case you haven't I'll put the link in the show notes but you can have one that says knitter or yarnivore there might be one that says maker and you can get bags and t-shirts and lots of other things so I treated myself to a sweater a sweatshirt I'm really happy I love it right so I'll see you again next time hopefully I will um, be a bit more organized over the next two weeks basically what in the last fortnight I've basically skived off loads that's what it feels like so um, starting from not now let's say starting from next Wednesday I'm gonna be um, a businesswoman and I will sort myself out and be worky right so well, well I'll let you know you'll find out won't you whether or not that came true I'll see you again next time thank you very much for watching cheerio bye bye <laughs>